everybody. So if you saw the last video, we were using IL2CPP dumper to dump the game assembly for Rust so that we could find the base net workable offset. And in the process, we also got this dummy DLL folder. So what this dummy DLL folder has is a assembly dash C sharp DLL to where we can go in and find use that to find offsets and classes and all the information we need for our game. So this case, Rust. So if you have no clue what I'm talking about, just go back and I'll have a link in the description. You can go back and watch the video. But from here on out, I'm assuming you already know how to use IO2CPP dumper and have done that. So after you do this, you want to download another program called dnspy. Um, I'll have a link to it here. It's github.com slash dnspy slash dnspy. I'll just put the link in the description. You can just go to releases and then download your release. Uh, one of these. You can choose between one of these. Um, and then once you have that, I would check it on virus total by just doing this. I'm going to pull up virus total and then let's find our... Let's find dnspy. When you download it, it should look something like this. You just take your dnspy exe, put it in that bad boy, and make sure it's clean. All right, so from there, we're gonna go ahead and open up dnspy, and it should be empty like it you see here. So we're just going to open up dnspy, and let's go up here and go to file, open, and you're going to want to navigate to your dummy DLL folder. So uh, what we had from our 2 cpp dumper, God, that is a mouthful to say, and go to dummy DLL folder and click on assembly C sharp and open it. So this is going to open your assembly C sharp DLL to where you can start navigating through it and checking things out. So you're going to, to click this drop down on the left here, click assembly C sharp DLL, and then click this dash. Now this dash opens up all of the classes that the Ru Rust code has. So uh, probably most notable class you're going to run into with Rust is going to be your base player class. So let's just go ahead and find that and, uh, and start looking at it. So either I'm dyslexic or I just can't find it. PR player. There it is. Cool. So now you'll see on the side here, you have all of the methods. Uh, this would be the constructor, I assume, and then you have all of your other methods. Sadly, um, with the internal stuff, we're not going to be messing with these. Uh, we're not doing internal stuff, so we're, we wouldn't be messing with the methods. But you can scroll down until you stop seeing methods and you start seeing variables. So right here is our first variable that pops up so I'm just gonna click here site here we go is this it all right I'm not even gonna work so uh, what I think is kind of like the easy way to go about this is you just find uh, whichever thing you want to know the offset for so if we want to know the offset for um, let's see down here. I just realized it's an ABC order. It's disgusting. So if we wanted to see the offset for the player belt, we could click belt here, and this is going to be our offset. Uh, but if you want to do things in order, which I think is a lot cleaner and honestly easier, you just click on the whole class on this left side here so we're going to click on the base player class it'll open this up and now you just scroll past all of these methods so you see how this is a method this is a method everything is a method uh, we can't really do anything with that so we're just going to scroll past them until we start getting to variables okay so you see the difference between um, what we saw up here before so these methods with the curly braces, etc., getters and setters, etc., versus these um, these just variables. So these are just straight up variables. So we can use our offsets on these or find the offsets for these. So let's go to something important. So uh, player models one in Rust that you're going to use a lot. I use it to find 
player position. Um, so if you want to know the player model, the offset from the base player is going to be x4 ox4co. So let's just keep track of these. So let's do base player class. And I'm writing this in Notepad++, but you could write this in C++, whatever you want to do. We're going to use hashtag define player, player model. And then we're going to type in what it is, ox4co. So from the base player class, this is going to be our offset for if we want to find the player model. If we want it defined, let's see, let's see. Where's a good one that we can show? All right, was dead is an interesting one. So I don't know if you're supposed to use this, but I use this to tell if someone's dead or not. So it's a true or false. So if they're not dead, it's going to be false. If it, they are dead, it'll be true. So let's just do define was dead. OX, um, where'd it go? 523, 523. So from the base player class, it's going to be, this is going to be the offset you have to use to get to that variable. All right, so let's find one more and then I'll show you a little bit uh, in more in depth. Um, look at this. I'm trying to find a good one that you can like change, but base player doesn't really have any that you can change. Client team is, well, actually I don't use client team, I use a different thing. But you know, you can look through here and just have a look at, uh, at some interesting ones. All right, so let's go back up to player model that we looked at before. OX4CO, I believe. Yep. All right, so here we have player model, right? So we can see uh, the last one was public bool uh, was dead, so it's true or false. This is public player model, uh, player model. So this green part right here is the type. So this is a class made by Rust. So it's a the player model right here variable is of type player model so what we can do is click on this class and you'll see in this sidebar we've been navigated away from um, away from base player to now we are in this one right here player model so anyway I can zoom in on this um, well, that might help so you'll see we're in this class now so we can go if we want to find the position we uh, once again scroll past all these dirty little methods and hold on let me see if i can yep that makes it way easier scroll past all those dirty little methods and we get down here to uh our offsets um i don't know if any of these okay these are some that are useful, smooth look angle. You can get, from these you can get your, which direction your player is looking like north, south, east, west, that kind of stuff. Um, but we want to find position. Is that on here? I guess where this is where I got position from. Position. Hmm. All right, so, okay, right here is our position. So, in here we would do player model class, because that's the class we're in. These comments right here are just to help you, because whenever you these offsets get changed, you're gonna wanna know what class each offset was in, so you can go and check it again. So we're gonna do player model class, um, hashtag define, uh, who, position really you would do like something like player position and then let's do ox208 so basically what this is saying is if you want to find a player's position you're going to want to go to from that base player so you would find the base player uh, maybe i'll go over that in another video that's more complicated though but you would find your base player and from the base player you would do the offset ox4c0 and go to that pointer um read that pointer and it's gonna bring you to the player model class for that base player. Then from that player model class, you're gonna to wanna to read your existing piece of memory. So what you just read from here, plus your offset. So we're gonna read this, where this, wherever that points to, plus 
our, our new offset and that's going to give us the position so we want to say this returns a returns vector three so uh this is this is also useful because you're going to want to know how to read this so we're going to read this as like um you know, what, what is it like d word 64 so i mean this isn't the return type of it but this is how you would read it so read that as a d word 64 it returns a player model uh though so you read that you get to the player model and then you're going to want to read the position as a vector three so then you once you read that as a vector three, you can do things like uh, like dot x dot y dot z to find the position of it. So that's kind of a long-winded rundown of how to find offsets and how to use offsets. I know it probably wasn't the best. Maybe I can show some code example in the next video or something of using these things. But yeah, hope that helps. And honestly, there's a way easier way of doing this where you don't have to do any of this. Uh, you can just navigate to rust.dumps.host and in here you can look up base player and you can find all the offsets you need. This is the really easy way to do it. Personally, this is what I do. But if for some reason the creator of this, uh, Henny or Heine, I think his name is, um, stops updating this it's nice to know how to do it on your own with dnspy and il2cpp dumper but yeah so just check out this i would personally i would suggest checking out this website uh kind of messing around looking at offsets and using reclass and then once you kind of get the hang of how offsets work you can start using dnspy but yeah hopefully this answers some of your questions.